Tonight, I freaked out. I was desperate. I ripped my room apart. I had to find one. I started smoking because I was hanging around with my sister's friends and it was really important for me to fit in with them because I was a lot younger than they were. It, just as soon as I got into grade nine, it was just like boom, sex, alcohol, smoking, drugs, everything. I was with a few of my friends and uh, we were at a party and we were just you know, walking down the street and she handed out cigarettes, so I just took one like everybody else. I started smoking because my mother had always said not to be like my brothers because they always smoked and uh, they were sort of like just bad, whatever. And so I just decided, I guess I did it to be a rebel, I guess. I stole some of my brother's cigarettes and went out to the front of the house hoping that she'd catch me and she didn't. My best friend smoked, and everybody I hung around with smoked. So I kind of got into it to feel accepted. You have all these teenagers around you. They don't know anything either, but you're looking up to them because you have nobody else to look up to. And so you think they're the answer. And they look great, so you want to look like them. So you take the cigarette. There was a certain place at school where everyone who smoked hung out. You didn't even have to talk. You could just ask for a light or a cigarette. I hated the first one, but it became part of my routine, of who I was. I remember it vividly. It was my very first day of grade nine, and I was called down to the guidance counselor for guidance and counseling. I sat across the desk from this ancient, ancient woman, and she said to me, Now, Sandra, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Big question for a 14-year-old. But I actually had an answer because I had always loved archaeology. So I said with a relative amount of confidence, I would like to be an archaeologist. And she said, oh, no, dear, that's no work for a girl. Up until that moment, I didn't know I was a girl. I didn't know that there were going to be rules for girls and rules for boys. I didn't know that these were career blockers. At the very same time, my parents had decided to divorce. And the rules of my life were changing. My parents had decided that their marriage was no longer applicable. And they were breaking a rule that I had always thought was going to be there for the rest of my life. Something about being a girl and not being able to be an archaeologist was a rule that I'd never been acquainted with before. Suddenly there was a new rule I had to, I had to embody. However, regardless of the fact that my life was going hurtling out of my control, I realized there was something I could actually do. I could actually do this without anybody's like saying yes or no. I could smoke, I could smoke. So I did. When I started high school, I felt like such a nobody. I didn't like the way I looked and I was always worried about what other people thought of me. But when I had a cigarette in my hand, I felt better. I thought I looked good. It was like no one could put me down. smoking it was it was kind of important for me to see myself and the way I looked with a cigarette in my hand so I'd, I'd practice in front of the mirror when my parents had gone out just to see the image 
you know, the way I looked. I think the images that guys have to look up to is something like a James Dean image, and the images that we girls have are like sexy models. You look at these magazines, they have beautiful women smoking. So you're thinking, well, wait a minute. If these women are so beautiful and skinny and they're smoking, why is it so bad? Women who have come a long way, that has nothing to do with smoking, and they just they take advantage of, of how much women have done over the years to advertise cigarettes, and I don't think it's fair, and I think it's sexist. Advertisements don't sell cigarettes, they sell women. Derek, something you said in the meeting today, your suggestion that we target young women in the new cigarette campaign. Yes, Lorette. Let me explain an unspoken rule we have in the tobacco industry. We don't encourage young women to smoke. Uh, yes, but my su suggestion was based on some very important market research. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've all read that. Young women buy a lot of cigarettes. Many women do. But we don't encourage them to smoke. We really don't have to. I'm afraid I don't understand. Look, what is it that our advertising has spent the last 70 years convincing women smokers? Uh, that the woman who smokes is an independent person in control of her destiny. Exactly. Independent and sexy. And isn't that what every vulnerable teenage girl desperately wants to be? Yes, but isn't peer pressure a significant factor? Don't be naive. The pressures on women of any age are much greater than that. So, smoking is a form of rebellion? It doesn't matter to us whether women smoke to rebel or to belong. Either way, we do just fine. Anyway, if the campaign is so successful, I suggest we leave it the way it is. Sponsor sporting events which associates us with daring and good health. And continue to market the slim and light brand. Perfect for young women obsessed with their weight. So indirectly, we've been targeting young girls for years. What about your lunch? This is lunch. I gotta go. Derek, our company believes in young women. It's a tough world for them. And our product helps them to believe in themselves. It just happens to make us a great deal of money. It's strange to think that I used to smoke because of how it made me look. I don't care about that anymore. Now I just do it. Yesterday, I wanted to get my mother a present, but I ended up buying cigarettes instead. I'm so tired of always being broke. I smoke for everything. I smoke when I get up in the morning. To get out of bed, I have to have a cigarette. I smoke after I eat. I smoke with coffee or whatever. I smoke really for everything. At the beginning when you start smoking, you're just experimenting with it. And of course, you don't think that you're going to become addicted. And, and addiction is so foreign to you when you're younger. You don't really, you don't know. And you aren't worried about it. And you know, you figure, oh, it's just one cigarette. But then one cigarette leads to impressing other people. And then you're buying packs for yourself, and then you're bumming off people. And I mean, around my sister, they were just like, oh, isn't that cute? You know, a little kid smoking. But now they're apologizing. Meg, we're so sorry that you started. And they're dealing with their own addictions, and I'm left to deal with mine. I've um, become desperate to the point where I'll, like, get cigarette butts and get out the tobacco and roll up a cigarette myself or where I go out on the street and try to bum cigarettes off people. 
really wanted some cigarettes, but normally I'd go out and get them, but it was really cold, and I, I just didn't feel like it. And then we had an idea. Let's order a pizza with nothing on it and order, like, four packs of cigarettes. But we found out that you had to have something on it. You can't just have, like, plain dough. So we ordered a plain pizza with nothing on it, just cheese, and four packs of cigarettes. Smoking is a contradiction because it, it, you make it... You think that you're c controlling the cigarette because you're buying it, it's your money, you're smoking it when you want to make you feel good or to make you feel relaxed, but in reality it's controlling you because of the negative health effects it's doing on your body. And I kind of think if you go back to when they invented cigarettes, if they substituted hammers instead of tobacco, would we all go out after, after dinner and like hit ourselves on the head? You know, when I was young, the idea of addiction never occurred to me. I mean, I think the sum total of what I knew about smoking at the time was that it was bad for you and that it uh, stunted your growth. Hardly reason enough to uh, stop smoking. At least that's what I thought. Anyway, one afternoon, I'm sitting in the kitchen with uh, Sherry's mom and, uh, you know, and having to smoke. <laughs> Just like... <sighs> and Sherry's mom says, oh, my God. You're not going to go to the prom smoking like that, I hope. And I went, well, well, what's wrong with the way I'm smoking? You see, this is the official position for smoking in a washroom. How else can you hand off the cigarette to the next stall? I ask you. Anyway, she said, no, no, no. you got to smoke like a lady. First of all, cross your legs. Absolute must. You must cross your legs. Then take the cigarette and bring it to your head. Never bring your head to the cigarette, okay? Light the cigarette. Inhale. Blow up. And then blow down. That's how a lady smokes. You see, if you're going to do something for the rest of your natural life, you might as well do it well. There's two things I depend upon most in the world, and one is my inhaler, the other are my cigarettes. And the mix of them both, just having asthma and smoking, makes me really susceptible to throat infections and stuff, so it's not too good. Well, when my mother was pregnant with me, it was in the early 70s, and she was in her late 30s. So back then, they didn't have any warnings about uh, smoking being a risk during pregnancy. So unfortunately, I was born about two months early and I had to stay in the hospital for another month because I had lung problems and heart problems and eye problems. Two of my friends smoked regularly and they were on the pill and um, they went to the doctor or something for a checkup or something and they found out that they had blood clots, I think in their leg, a blood clot in their leg. And I was really surprised and I was kind of angry because I didn't realize that that was even possible. Unfortunately, I've had bronchitis three times this year alone. Um, the first time I went to my doctor and uh, he asked me if I smoked and I was very, I was very self-conscious, I guess you could say, about telling him I did because I knew that's why I had bronchitis. And uh, he was, he kind of got really mad and he said, you know, you could prevent this. And, and then uh, I got it again and I got it again and I had to use an inhaler and take pills. Well, when I realized, I guess, that I was a smoker, I guess I was kind of concerned, sort of, about my health, thinking that, well, my grandma has lung cancer. I might get it, but I guess I thought I'd quit before. You're young, 
but you know a lot. But no one seems to recognize that. You're trying to see who you are in the midst of a lot of people who are trying to tell you how to be. Much of what you see around you makes you angry. You're trying to find a way to express that. You have a lot to say. It seems as if no one will listen. <laughs> How do you know all this? It's my business to know. Why did you want to see me? The agreement. Well, surely you remember. No, not really. You wanted to appear more attractive, to, to look old, feel stronger. You wanted power, and that's what I gave you. Well, I just wanted to be myself. Perfectly natural. And did it work? For a while. It felt like that anyway. And now, naturally enough, I want something in return. What? Your lungs. Oh, please, don't be alarmed. Not very much of them, and certainly not all at once. It'll be a gradual process over a period of, oh, 20 or 30 years. For a long time, you'll only notice a slight cough, a shortness of breath, hardly a bother at all. But it says other things, too, about strokes, heart problems, cervical cancer. This is awful. You really should have read the fine print. I never signed this. Just a formality. You can't hold me to this. You can't hold me to something I never signed. True enough. But I can certainly try. I smoke way too much. When I woke up this morning, I felt gross. My throat hurt and my hair reeked. <laughs> the last thing I wanted was a cigarette. But it was a bad morning, and as soon as I left the house, I had one anyway. I guess that's why I had the Nick fit tonight. Whenever I'm really upset, I reach for a cigarette. A lot of my friends, or a lot of poor people smoke, and a lot of my friends are really poor. So the smoking kind of helps relieve the tension of being poor. When I was really depressed, I felt like a cigarette. I didn't get angry so much as I know a lot of other people do, but I got really depressed a lot. It's problems with my father and whatnot. Lately, I just broke up with my boyfriend, so I be smoking a lot lately. If I'm upset, I have to have a cigarette, or else I'll cry and I can't cry if I have a cigarette in my mouth. It, it relaxed me when I was mad or when I was tense. And I just, I was going through a really rough time, so it just always relaxed me. It's like, um, it's like when you're a baby and you have like a blanket there. That's like my security blanket is like my cigarette. You know, in retrospect, I used smoking to draw certain people towards me and to repel others. And it wasn't actually until I uh, got older and I started to grow up that I realized that I wanted more people near me than the select five who smoked their heads off um, in my world. I wanted other people to come towards me. I wanted to become part of a community. Um, I was really tired of being isolated and I had isolated myself in more ways than just smoking, but smoking was certainly one of the ways that I did it. I remember realizing that I was addicted to smoking the day I tried to quit. And I'd never seen myself the way that I was the day I tried to quit smoking. It was so distasteful of me that I had, I had to smoke immediately right after that. However, I did quit. I did stop. People did come towards me. Not in droves, but they came. The people that I wanted to. I actually have a life partner who uh, has asthma. 
I realize now that if I smoked, I could not be with him. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I want to be with him more than I want to be a smoker. So that's it. I realize that I've been thinking a lot about quitting lately. I'm sick of having my life run by cigarettes. I got discouraged when I tried to quit before, and I couldn't do it. It just didn't seem right. But now, it, it feels different. I don't want to smoke anymore. I really want to quit this time. I think I'm gonna have to quit because it's so much money. It's a waste of money. I mean, I'm burning my allowance on it. Money for movies goes towards cigarettes. It's just, it's something that I really don't need right now. I don't have the income. I can't keep it up for it to be something pleasurable. It's more like, wow, I've got a pack of cigarettes. That's what I'm gonna do all weekend, sit around and smoke my cigarettes. I mean, it's, it's a little strange. Well, I had a bad cough and I kept getting worse whenever I had a cigarette and it started tasting awful. So it wasn't any fun anymore. So I stopped. <laughs> it took me a long time to quit because I smoked for over a year and in that short space of time I got really addicted. So it took me like almost another year to quit. Well, my family was really proud of me when I had quit before, which was last year. And um, I didn't tell them that I started smoking again be because they were so proud. And my grandmother was actually the one person who was really proud of me. And so I'm, I'm actually pretty close to her. And we were going up to her house for the weekend. It was up at the cottage. And she was going to be up there. And I didn't really have any money that weekend. And I finished my last cigarette at the donut shop before, like right after school, before we went up. And so I just decided not to buy any more. And you have to have enough confidence in yourself to say to yourself, I can do this, I'm a strong enough person and I want to do it. But nobody else can make you quit smoking. in yourself that you can quit, then it makes it easier. So, I, and I guess you can apply that to your everyday life, that if you really think you can do something, then you can. Since I quit smoking, I feel a lot better about myself. I have more energy. Um, I'm not as tired as I used to be. And I just, I just feel better about myself. Like I, I'm proud of myself for quitting. It's like something that I've accomplished that I'm proud of. I don't think I'm perfect. Like I, I can point out all the flaws in myself, but I think I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> 